Jesus and his parables. So often shares a story and it always has a twist in it that reveals some bit of truth. And so it is that he shares with the Pharisees and the religious leaders the truth about God's kingdom is not what they think. He is holding up a mirror once again to them by telling this parable of the tenants. He tells of a landowner who has a vineyard, which in that day would have been known as God and the Israelites, for the Israelites were the ones who were to tend the vineyard. And it's clear that God as a landowner, as the one who gives us all that we have, invites us to be co-laborers in his kingdom. But he seeks those who will be fruitful. They will fear him more than man. They will seek to share in the harvest. The Pharisees don't like this parable. They fail to realize and recognize Jesus as the one who is the cornerstone, the one who is the foundation of our faith and our hope. My prayer is that you might know that we are not yet done with hope. That as we are called to press on with this faith, to the very end. So what is it that gets in the way of our pressing on, of our uh, daring to boldly share what we've been given from this most generous God through Christ and his death and resurrection? I would say that very often we might fall into the lies of shame that would say that somehow we're the ones that have to produce the good fruit. As it's clear, God wants co-laborers that are fruitful and kingdom fruit. Very often we might feel like there is a judgment against us that we're not being fruitful for the kingdom. But the good news is that if we are faithful with but a mustard seed, with, if we are faithful with little, he will expand it, which is the very nature of his economy the economy of the kingdom of heaven. A number of years ago, as many of you have heard me talk about, we began to sow seeds of hope. Co-laboring in God's vineyard here in Texas City. First, it was just sharing a few little signs of hope about and we were faithful with something little, little, literally, signs of hope, and some that were bigger. And we began to tell others of this hope that is within us, other churches, other people in our community, and in that, being faithful with this little message of hope and that God loves you no matter what, and so do we. What started very small has expanded where others have gone and invited their youth to be ambassadors of hope, to share signs of hope. In fact, the Wesleyan church plant that started here at St. George's took that to their national church and shared with them and they in turn shared it at their youth fellowship 
a few summers ago and had over 200 signs of hope made by their youth across the nation. The Disciples of Christ did the same thing with their national youth rally. And again, multitude of signs of hope were created and shared and went out. Last year, we declared hope with signs of hope over our schools. Myself and two other members faithfully praying and counting on God's promise that what we pray in confidence in him, he will deliver. And so it was that we declared hope over our schools. Just a few of us starting out small. And do you know this year over 16 churches in Texas City and Lamarck and Dickinson went out with groups of 20 up to 20. There were maybe five in our group and over 20 and several others praying and declaring hope over our schools. It started out small and it's grown bigger and bigger. And that is the good news is that it doesn't take a lot. It can be something simple that you share with one other person and then they share and then it just keeps on growing because that is what the kingdom of heaven is. It is something that multiplies beyond our expectation. So I wonder, what is it that you might imagine or who is it that you might imagine needs hope at this time? And how might we as tenders of this vineyard share hope boldly, even in small ways, whether it be a card or sharing a word of encouragement. How might we in this time pre-election put out hope for America, declaring it so? For when we declare in God's name, he makes it so. I invite you to be so bold, to not give in to shame, but in fact, to claim what is true, that hope is alive through Jesus Christ and through us, and we can claim that. Amen. Amen.